Welcome back in to Goss Stadium. It uh, appears we're coming back just a tad early uh, when BYU is at the plate. We've already had two pitches to Andrew Pintar, one ball and one strike. Well, Abel works quick. Yes, he, likes he does. He get right back on the mound. and I mean, he's only what? 20, 24 pitches yeah, is what they're the showing right now. Fourth inning, and he's yeah. 24 pitches in. Pintar flat out in his first at bat and looks at ball two. So two and one to Penny. Penny doing some damage in the previous series at Texas. The 2-1 to Pintar. Jammed him into foul territory. The third baseman, Ducart, moves over to make the catch. And Pintar is retired for the first out in the top of the fourth. Well, and we just offensively haven't looked great. Everything's been a, a, just a routine, soft jam shot, foul ball, or late foul ball. That's, all, that's the exact same type of out that Penny had except it was to the first base the first yeah. time. Ball one to Mitch McIntyre. They're trying to have like a fake crowd sound? Maybe. I don't know what. There are no fans here, as we mentioned. That pitch in the dirt. In fact, it bounced a couple feet in front of home plate. So two balls and no strikes to McIntyre. We're finally in a good positive count here. Let's see if Mitch can make it hurt. The 2-0. Good. This is low. Now three balls and no strikes to Mitch McIntyre. Mitch grounded out to third. Most likely be taking here. Abel delivers the 3-0. In for strike one, and as you call, taking. We'll so, be on time right here. 3-1, put a good swing on. McIntyre's one of those guys. You get him on base and then see what happens with his speed. 3-1. Misses, ball four. And the perfect game is gone. And the perfect game is gone. <laughs> we like that. Mitch McIntyre with a walk, and is at first base with one out. Well, That'll bring in the third baseman, Austin Deming, struck out looking in the first. The only run he gave up this year was after a walk. He gave up a double and a run scored. The first pitch to Deming. Another ball bouncing. Good block. Good block. And McIntyre had quite the lead at first. A quick throw down to first base was not in time to get him, but I think he was caught off guard that they threw down to first. Yeah, Mitch was uh, going to take off on that ball in dirt, but the catcher did a good job of picking it. The 1-0 from Abel. Foul back to the screen by Deming. One ball and one strike. You know, he's he's 90 to 93 miles an hour. I mean, we face guys that have thrown harder than him, but he's a true pitcher because he can throw that changeup and breaking ball for a strike wherever he wants. It makes it, it makes that fastball look like 97. The 1-1 pitch. Now two balls and one strike. And this is really the first inning where Abel has not looked completely comfortable and been able to... Well, we've been patient too, right? Overwhelm BYU. Yeah, Mitch was patient in getting that walk. He wasn't over-aggressive. The hitters in the first inning was just swing, 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 swing. The 2-1 pitch to Deming. Good. Inside and high, 3-1 and now. Against the Beaver ace, Kevin Abel. Good shot. You're going to see Mitch take off here. He runs well. He has a still on the year. And the 3-1 to Deming. Out of boy. High and inside again. Back-to-back walks for Kevin Abel. Well, he was cruising through three, right? Three up, three down getting a bunch of first pitch outs and so he had walked three coming into this you know, game and has already walked two here in the top of the fourth this is where you have to make him pay you're facing a guy who just doesn't give up runs you've had two really good at bats by your leaders on this team and mitch and deming and now you have cowden who's had a really good year the average doesn't show it but he's hit balls really hard up in a spot to give your team an early lead here now timeout is called and sometimes when you can, you know, punch a team like this in the mouth early, you know, it, it all of a sudden the confidence and momentum starts to go your way and, and good things can happen. Cowden at the plate facing Abel. The first pitch to Josh. Does not swing. Looks at ball one. Good eye by Cowden. Well, so far their second time through the order. They've made good adjustments on doing what? Being patient, right? 
everyone else was first pitch swinging and, and getting out kind of their realm, but now they've they're taking good pitches and ready to go. The 1 0 to count, mm. and Josh ahead of that swung through strike one. Yeah, when you throw a 1 0 changeup with that much depth right there, Josh was just geared up for a fastball to do damage. So one ball, one strike, one out, two on. Cougars with an opportunity to take a lead here in the top of the fourth. We are scoreless from Goss Stadium. The 1 1. Just take. misses. Two and one now to Cowden. That's a really good take right there. That's a tough one to yes. take, too. That's a curveball that's borderline down. He got the benefit of the doubt there with the ball called, but it's a close pitch. Two and one. And now Cowden asks for time good. and is granted. Abel didn't like it. He like stayed on the mound in the in the stretch position, staring at him for a few seconds after he called time. The 2-1 pitch. Strike two. Got a fastball there on the outside corner. After he had thrown those three straight breaking balls, I think he got him guessing a little bit. Two walks here in the inning by Abel. At BYU with runners at first and second. One out. And the pitch to Cowden. Strike three looking. Was that a curveball? It was, yeah. Really good one. That is a big, big out for Kevin Abel. So now two away, and the batter will be the designated hitter, Jacob Wilk, hitting with runners at first and second. Well, Jake had a big two-out, three-run home run against Texas. He could use a big single right here. Good speed at second. First pitch to Wilk, bounces in front of home plate. That's a huge block right there. Yes, by Clonch. Did a nice job and bounced right back up, making sure that Deming and McIntyre were not moving. Yeah, it was a 54-footer. It bounced in front of the plate, and normally you're going to be able to advance on that, but great job keeping it in front of him. Wilk awaiting the 1-0, and Abel delivers. Strike one, one ball and one strike to the Salado, Texas native, Jacob Wilk. Big spot early in this game. Abel was cruising, got himself into a little trouble, had the big strikeout, and now Wilk with an opportunity here. The 1-1 pitch to Wilk. Swing and a miss, strike two. Even if BYU does not score a run, you've made Abel work, and he came into the inning with 24 pitches. He's at 43 now. Yeah, I agree. You've doubled that, but... But you, when you're facing a guy like yes, Bishop, you have right. to make these hurt. Yes, you're correct, 100%. The 1-2 pitch to Wilk. And the strikeout of Jacob Wilk. And the Cougars leave two. We will head to the bottom of the fourth, still scoreless on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's Jason Shepard. Bottom of the fourth inning, we are still scoreless. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you. Joe Casey leading off the bottom of the fourth for Oregon State. Facing Easton Walker. Casey from right here in Corvallis. And it looks at ball one from Walker. Casey struck out in the first inning. The 1-1 pitch. Misses. Now two balls and one strike. That was close. I don't know where that missed. Must have been a little outside. Three-game series here against Oregon State. Game two tomorrow. Game three Saturday. The 2-1. Misses. Now three balls and one strike. They don't want to fall behind to these hitters. Oh. Something came on. Ground ball to shortstop. Nice dig by Cole. The throw is wide and not in time anyway. Yeah, even if he would have dug that, it was a hit. Casey will have the third base hit for the Beavers here in the bottom of the fourth. So the leadoff man is on, and now the catcher, Troy Clonch, who struck out in the second inning, will bat with nobody out and runner at first. That's what speed does right there. 
He's so fast. That ball's hit hard, but on the backhand of Peyton Cole there, and he's not able to to get it there in time. Clotch, number 17 from Vacaville, California. Junior. Looks at ball one high from Easton Walker. And uh, Easton doesn't have the fastball command that he normally has. That he's had his first three appearances this year. He normally gets ahead early with fastballs, but he's been missing high or away on strike one today. Pitch to Clonch. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Get you a ground ball right here to your second baseman. Get you a double play. One ball, one strike. Runner at first. Nobody out. No score in the bottom of the fourth. Walker delivers to Clonch. Another swing and a miss. Strike two. So Easton jumps ahead of Clonch. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, the fastball looked like it was rising right there from this angle that we're at. One, two, got to make a good pitch here. One ball, two strike count. The pitch misses two and two now to Clonch. Yeah, tried to throw a little cutter away to see if he would swing at it, and he did a good job taking that. First pitch tomorrow, same as today. 6.30 Mountain is when we will go on the air. 5.30 Pacific Time. And then first pitch five minutes later here on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. The 2-2 pitch to Clotch. Misses. Now a full count. I would expect action here. Casey runs extremely well. See if he'll move here. But every time I said that today, they haven't. So we'll see. Joe Casey at first base. Picked up a single to begin the bottom of the fourth. Now a full count to Clonch. Walker delivers, and Casey was certainly on the move. Clonch gets a piece, fouls it straight back, and we'll do it again. Easton Walker, the senior from Pleasant Grove, Utah. Cougars in the all grays. The Navy Cougars across the chest. In the Navy numbers. The 3 2 misses. And now the first two have reached a single and a walk. Well, With nobody a, out here in the bottom of the fourth. Now, this is a spot here where they'll probably, Ducart will sack bunt here, but try to beat it out because he can really run. Easton is one of our most athletic pitchers. He was a, you know, 6A shortstop, you know, MVP of the state, really good athlete in high school. And so if it's bunted hard enough, he can get that force out at third, try to get the lead runner. Ducard at the plate, grounded out to short in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. But now batting with nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth and runners at first and second. Showing bunt, bunts Ooh, it foul. Almost hit him. It absolutely yeah. almost hit him. Just like Texas, I thought that was going to be another out yep. there. In the bottom of the ninth, when things started to get a little hairy, where BYU had the one-run lead, and the Longhorns had a runner at second with nobody out. Ducard at the plate, facing Walker. Easton now up to 53 pitches. But... No runs have crossed the plate thus far for either team. Defense preparing for a bunt. Ducart Tried to slash there. Yeah, swing and a foul backwards. So, 0 and 2 now to Ducart. It's always interesting to see what kind of coaches like to two-strike bunt. There's some that really love it, and there's some that are just totally against it. You just never know. You better have a guy that you know yeah. can lay down a bunt if you're going to bunt with two strikes. Because if you give somebody an out like that, most coaches aren't going to be too happy. Exactly. But you just can't be caught off guard if he tries. The 0-2 pitch. Misses ball one. He didn't try. He didn't square there, so he's most likely going to swing.
One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Two on. Bottom of the fourth. Scoreless ball game. Walker looking to keep it that way. The one-two pitch to Ducart. Where is that Just at? misses. Good pitch. My guess is you say low. It's two balls and two strikes now to Ducart. Well, Abe stuck that pitch, and, and Abe usually doesn't stick it unless he thinks it's a strike. So didn't didn't catch the break there that he was hoping. That, was, that would have been a huge strikeout in this situation. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch, swing. Oh, it looks like Barely. Ducart just got a piece. Barely got a piece of that. Just nicked it. Stays alive, two and two. It's because you got too excited with your voice. Abe couldn't catch up to it. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do, catch a foul tip. You just got to get lucky. The count stays two and two. The first two have reached. Single and a base on balls. Ducard at the plate. Walker delivers the 2-2. Pitch high. And now Ducard has worked the count full. It's now three and two. I doubt they're moving here. Got to execute. Can't give them free bases. They're good enough. They don't need the help. That's absolutely correct. Bottom of the fourth. Big at bat. The payoff pitch. A Swing boy. and a miss. And Walker comes back to strike out Ducart. That's a big strikeout. That is a massive K for the Cougars starter, Easton Walker. And now one away. And you can get out of the inning unscathed with the double play. Well... I mean, work's still to be done, though, right? Absolutely. You got the big one. They didn't let them advance, but you still got good hitters up in big situations. There's still only one out, runner in scoring position, but get you a ground ball and get you out of this inning. Kyler McMahon. He can really run, by the way. Flew out to right field, so he is 0 for 1 today, and he looks at ball 1 from Walker. The chance of, of getting him to hit into a double play, he's got to hit it really hard because he can really run. McMahon, a junior from Seattle, Washington. One out, two on. The 1 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Easton came right at him. One ball and one strike. Yeah, good fastball elevated right there. Blew it by him. Yeah, that uh, piped-in crowd noise yeah. is pretty interesting. Really exciting, let yes. me tell you. The 1-1 pitch. Another swing and a miss. Strike two. Go right back to it. Look, that strikeout yeah. looks like it's pumped up, Easter yeah. Walker. Yeah, go right back to that pitch. See if he'll chase it for the third straight time. Or do you think he's expecting it and you go something off speed? Uh, that's a possibility as well. I would try to climb the ladder a little bit higher here. One ball, two strikes. And fouled back to the screen. The count stays one and two to Kyler McMahon. 5'9", 177-pound junior from Seattle. Come on, E. Get a big pitch here. One out, two on. Scoreless ball game in the bottom of the fourth. Walker delivers the one-two and misses low. Two balls and two strikes. He hasn't been able to command his slider today. Every time he's tried to throw that, he's just missed away, away, away. He usually is able to spot it up for a couple of, you know, called strikes. And they're not swinging at it. Right now, really, fastball has been his best pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Walker delivers to McMahon. Ground ball to first. Atchikar will step on first. The runners do advance. So now with two outs... There are runners at second and third, but two away. Well, yeah, really good job there by McMahon to just put a ball in play and advance the runners. Freddie did a good job of fielding that and getting the out. But with both guys now advancing, runners at second and third, big spot here for Easton to try to work out of this jam that he kind of put himself in. Wade Meckler, the batter, lined out to right. Hitting with two outs and two on. Don't be surprised if he tries a two-out drag here for a hit in an RBI. First pitch to Meckler. Looks there. at strike one. 
There's the called strike. I've been waiting for Easton. That, that's like if you looked at his Texas start, he did that almost 80% of the batters. First pitch, called strike. But today, he's been struggling with that. That was like his first one that he's had. He's gotten him to swing for strike one, but not the called one, which opens things up for him. The 0-1 pitch to Meckler. That a boy. Line right to Achikar at first. And Easton Walker, after giving up a single and a walk with nobody out, gets out of the inning with no runs scored. Cougars coming to the plate in the top of the fifth. We are scoreless from Corvallis on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Cole Gamble, Freddie Achikar, and Abe Valdez will bat for the Cougars in the top of the fifth inning. Facing the Oregon State starter, Kevin Abel. First pitch is strike one to Cole Gamble. Current temperature here in Corvallis, 52 degrees. And so far tonight, we've avoided any precipitation. Not sure tomorrow we're going to be that lucky. He's saying 90% chance of uh, rain tomorrow, but we'll see when it actually occurs. The 0-1 pitch to Gamble for strike two. Uh, that's a tough break there. That's two in a row breaking balls that he's throwing for strikes. Change up and now uh, the, the curveball there. Gamble didn't like that pitch. Thought it was low. Cole for one. Abel delivers the 0-2. Cole? It's the fly ball to left field. Casey there makes the catch. And Cole now 0 for 2. First out of the inning here in the fifth. Next up, the first baseman. Well, Abel's as good as advertised, Shep. He, he's starting to get that changeup going. He can really throw that fastball. And, I mean, besides the couple of walks, he's been. First pitch to Achikar, fouled off to the left side, strike one. He's been basically doing whatever he wants so far here early through four and a third. He's at 50 pitches right now. The 0-1 to Freddie. Foul back, and now Freddie behind 0-2. Got the no-hitter going. I'm going to keep talking about that. <laughs> we got the perfect game gone. That's right. The 0-2. I mean, foul. 0-2, the count stays. I mean, the only run he's given up, he's given one run up, one run so far now in what, fifth, four, 13 innings pitched? 13 and two-thirds innings pitched on the year, something like that. He's he's the real deal, but you just got to fight and battle. The 0-2. Good pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, and out number two for Kevin Abel. The thing about Kevin Abel is that he doesn't, gotcha. like, give you a break. A lot of pitchers, sometimes you can just say, hey, today he, you, he can't throw the changeup. Just take it away. Make him a two-pitch pitch guy. He's thrown all three of his pitches for strikes and gotten out of, big, uh, gotten out of a big jam, and he just is so talented. A Valdez, first pitch from Abel. Swing and a miss, strike one. Abe grounded out to third in the third inning. Yo, two, a high fly ball. That Coming should land shop. near us once again. Make a play one oh, time. Make a play. Hey, right into my hand. He did. So he one hopper. Did. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Bottom of the fifth inning. Leading things off for the Beavers, the number eight hitter, Andy Armstrong. He lined out to center field in his first at bat, so he is 0 for 1. Facing Easton Walker, the Cougar starter. And the first pitch to Armstrong. Misses, ball one. Well, Easton doesn't have his best command of the year, but he just does what he does. He's a bulldog. He competes. He's gotten to a couple of jams he's been able to pitch out of. That's what you love about Easton is he always gives you a chance. Strike one. One ball and one strike now to Andy Armstrong. The 1-1 pitch. Ground ball up the middle. A diving Pintar can't get to it. And into center field. That'll be a base hit for Andy Armstrong. Yeah, hard line drive right back up the middle. Good piece of hitting there. (laughs) 
Jacob Melton will bat. He's one for one today. Now hitting with the runner at first and nobody out. First pitch, strike one to Melton. Yeah, good break of ball right there to get ahead. Melton can really run. We saw him get an infield single his first time up. Single in the third. Now waiting the 0-1 pitch from Walker. Another ground ball right up the middle and into center field. So back-to-back -back singles for the Beavers with nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, and both of those are hit really well on time with fastballs, hit right back up the middle. And now the Beavers got themselves a, another spot here with two guys on, nobody out. Preston Jones, the leadoff man, flied out and walked. So officially 0 for 1. But Oregon State has got something brewing here in the bottom of the fifth. Five hits now for the Beavers. Cougars still looking for their first. Well, another bunt situation here with their leadoff hitter. A little bit of a fake out. Easton spun around and faked the throw to second. Melton jumped back quickly. Trying to see if they catch or, him. Excuse me, off. Armstrong. See if he was catch him off guard there. Melton at first, Armstrong at second. At the plate, the leadoff man, Preston Jones, facing Easton Walker. Walker looks back at second and now delivers to Jones. Jones showed bunt, pulled it back, looks at ball one. These are the spots in college baseball, Shep, you know, that you don't see too often. And obviously in Major League Baseball, they like to swing all the time. These are spots in college baseball that's basically a 90% bunt opportunity here. And it's all about the teams that can execute those spots. The 1-0. Go catch that. Popped it up into foul territory. And because Atchikar was playing up looking for the bunt, able to come up, make the catch for the first out, and that is a big out for Easton Walker. That's twice now that they've had first and second no outs, and they can't execute the bunt. And then that player either pops out now or strikes out. So, But the same situation as last inning, Shep, where Easton has to continue to bear down here because why? Good hitter is up. Ryan Ober, single in his first at bat in the first inning, and then in the third, grounded out to short. But hitting with one out and two on. The first pitch, swing and a miss by Ober, strike one. That was a hack right there. He was trying to hit a three-run shot there, Shep. One out, still scoreless here in the bottom of the fifth. Easton Walker would like to put up another zero here in the bottom of the inning. Melton at first, Armstrong at second. The 0-1 to Ober fouls it off, and now he falls behind 0-2. Yeah, got him to foul back the slider running away. Got to execute right here. Easton's been flirting with danger a few innings now. Back-to-back -back innings, is able to get out of it last inning with, with facing who we're facing and able today. You've got to keep putting up zeros to give your team a chance. Easton at 75 pitches. And now delivers the 0-2. Check swing. They will oh, appeal. First base one. umpire says he did not go. Ball one. I agree with him. We actually have a really good view of that from yes, our we spot do. here. And I didn't think he went. Look, anything on the first base side, our angle is just about perfect. It is superb. If you missed the beginning of the broadcast, we are broadcasting not behind home plate, but sort of in right field past first. So anything around first base, we have a perfect angle. The 1-2. Chopped foul. The count stays one and two. Yes, yeah, slider that just kind of backed up and stayed in, and Ober just fouled it down the third baseline. Easton's looking for that ground ball double play right here or a strikeout. One ball, two strikes, one out, two on. They've scattered five hits so far in this game here, but they haven't been able to get the big knock. Easton's been doing a great job of getting out of danger. The one-two... 
That ball hit deep to left field. Back at the wall, the catch is made by McIntyre, and he'll quickly throw it back to the infield. Neither runner advancing. That's a good play by Mitch McIntyre to make the catch and quickly get the ball back in. Yeah, and the runner at second couldn't tag up because he thought it was going to be off the wall and he would score, but Mitch went back and did a great job of jumping and catching that ball about a few feet into the warning track. That was a dangerous play there. But nicely done by Mitch McIntyre. Got a beat on it right off the bat. Makes the catch. And now two away. Still runners at first and second. So still work to do. But now facing Joe Casey with two outs. Key battling Easton. This might be his last inning with the way that the pitch count's been run up there. At 80 pitches. The first pitch misses to Joe Casey. Ball one. Traditionally, when Easton gets, you know, 85 and above on the pitch count, his stuff can flatten out a little bit. He's going to give you everything he's got. And right now, he's given exactly what you need, finding a way to keep putting up zeros and giving your team a chance to win this game. The 1-0. Low, ball two. I don't know how Casey didn't swing at that. That was a good pitch. Just missed down. Two balls, no strikes. Melton at first base, Armstrong at second. They were both there with nobody out. Now, still there with two outs. Come on, E. The 2-0 in the dirt, ball three. Looks like we've got a couple of guys going in the pen. Looks like we have Boston Mavius going, and I can't see who the other guy is down there. The bullpen's hidden from us. There's a little window there I'm trying to look through. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. The 3-0, strike one. Casey thought he may have ball four. He started to flinch like he was about to drop the bat. He did. Go get him, E. Battle. Keep competing right here. Three and one now. The crowd going crazy here. At Goss Stadium. Absolutely. That scoreboard crowd noise is just blaring. (laughs) The 3-1. Misses ball four. Well, Abe calls timeout and heads out there to settle him down. It might even be to to give Give the the guy. Give the bullpen some time. That's three walks on the evening for Easton Walker. Now, now pitching coach Michael have, Bradshaw. Coming into the game, he had a total of Easton coming in no had walks. no walks. Yeah. So these are the first three walks of the season for Easton. Well, as I mentioned in the last few innings, his command isn't where it normally is. But what does Easton do? He gives you a chance because he just competes like crazy. And Coach Bradshaw takes him out and visit, but it looks like he's keeping him in there. And now Valdez will trot back to home plate. Big spot right here, facing a guy who's been clutch in his career as a good hitter. Cl- you, are you telling me that clunch is clutch? <laughs> I am telling you that. I've been waiting to use something like that. <laughs> that should make that should make our guy yeah. uh, Steve Clowkey, the voice of the Salt Lake Bees, happy. He is all about the puns. Big spot right here, East. Put up another zero. Two outs, two on. The pitch to clunch. Good. Fouled back, strike good. one. Good fastball, ran under his hands there. He's Barely able to get a piece of that. Oregon State, a top 20 team. Depending on what you look at, USA Today has them at number 19. D1 Baseball has them at 20. And there's another publication that actually has them at 21. The 0-1 fouled off to the right side. And now Walker, a strikeout away from getting out of this jam in back-to-back innings. A little fastball. In, fouled back, fastball away, fouled down the right field line, 0-2. You have to throw your best pitch right here if you're Easton. Bear down and figure out what is my best pitch to go to to get out of this inning right here. Two on, two outs, and an 0-2 count to Clonch. It's like Clonch called timeout. Come on, E. Right here, bud, right here. Big spot for Easton Walker and the BYU Cougars. Walker delivers the 0-2. High, ball one. Tried to throw that 100 miles an hour. (laughs) It was 92, but just overthrew that high. Reaching back, realizing that his pitch count, what is he at now, 90? 
He is at 85. Yeah. So getting close to 90 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Huge spot right here. Back-to-back singles and a couple of big outs and then a walk. Put him in this spot. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's Jason Shepard. Top of the sixth inning, still scoreless. First pitch, ball one to Peyton Cole from the Beaver starter, Kevin Abel. The 1-0, and Peyton Cole hits that ball down the right field line, and that will get down as a fair ball. Cole Cole on the way to second base, and that's a leadoff double for the Cougar shortstop, Peyton Cole. Hey, welcome this season. Peyton gets his first start and jumps on a changeup that's elevated and hits it down. I thought it might get out of here, but barely stayed fair, hit off the wall for a leadoff double. My biggest concern is whether or not it stayed fair or foul. That's the one part of the field that we can't see. We can't see. There's a tent there blocking that corner, but nicely done. Now we have to execute. And the no-hitter is over. It's over. That's why we talk about it. Pintar is probably going to be bunting here. Double for Peyton Cole. Pintar 0 for 2, two flyouts. And the first pitch bounces in the dirt in front of home plate, ball one. He didn't square there. Pintar has been such a great hitter, you know, batting 344 with 11 hits on the year. Seven walks. That's been the really impressive part. And three doubles. So coach may be saying, hey, they're going to play in. Let's see if we can sneak one by them. Abel at 60 pitches and delivers the 1-0. Another ball Man, in the dirt. Clunch is clutch back there, right? Blocking. I had to go there with you. but <laughs> Because he's had three or four now that – Easily should have skipped away and a runner advances, but he's been able to not only block it, but actually stick it in his glove on the block. Yeah, he's been pretty impressive. Yeah, Two balls, no strikes. Runner at second, nobody out. The 2-0, high, ball three. The Cougars able to get a hit. And get themselves in scoring position here in the top of the sixth. Sometimes that all it takes is one big hit to just kind of relax the team and loosen them up. The 3-0 to Pintar. Good take. This is four straight pitches to Pintar, all balls, a four-pitch walk. And now the first two have reached a double and then a walk has the Cougars in business with nobody out, runners at first and second. So Mitch tried to drag his first time today and was thrown out. You would think this is a 100% bunt opportunity, but Coach is maybe playing a little hunch here. He didn't try to bunt Pintar. It paid off with a walk. Here we go. The first pitch to McIntyre. Showing bunt, pulls back, and that pitch low, ball one. You know the most impressive part about Clonch is that he just struck out with bases loaded to end that inning. A lot of guys would take that defensively and make a mistake. It has not affected him at all. No, it hasn't at all. Cougars at first and second. Nobody out. Inside move. Fake fake pick off to second. You have, so the double play adept in the middle. First, I mean, second is shorter playing double play adept. And both corners are playing on the grass expecting Mitch to bunt here just get the ball down and let your guys advance the 1-0 pitch to McIntyre back pick throw down to second not in time but a very close throw by Clonch he made that a much more interesting play than I thought it was going to be as Peyton Cole just barely gets back to second oh how big was that you're talking by probably what three or four inches points per second on the tag there. It he all barely, worked out because yeah. it was ball two to McIntyre and Cole is safe. The 2-0 pitch. Mm. And that time, McIntyre not showing bunt and he looks at strike one. Yeah, coach let him t- uh, try to swing there 2-0, but he took a borderline pitch for strike one. I like that take though. See if he'll be back here with one strike trying to bunt. Abel delivers the 2-1. Good. Pitch high, ball three. This is where you have a tough dilemma. He just gave up a double, then a walk. Now he's 3-1 and one on a really good hitter. Do you give him green light here, or do you try to make him bunt? We'll see. Nobody out. Two on in the top of the six. Scoreless ball game. 
The 3-1 to McIntyre, mm. and he looks at strike two, a full count to Mitch. He's got to be ready, 3-1, to pull the trigger there. He took a fastball that he probably could slap that into left for an RBI. All right, now with two strikes, bear down here. Find a way to advance these runners. The 3-2 from Abel. Just down. misses and barely. Try to go to the change up there. Ball four, and the bases are loaded with nobody out in the top of the sixth for BYU. Well, Abel hasn't been in any kind of damage like this on the season. This is the first time where bases loaded, no out situation, and we have to make it pay. Deming had a huge uh, RBI force against Texas, and this is another spot where we need a big team at bat here. Double, walk, and walk. Has the bases loaded and nobody out. The first pitch to Demi. Good. High. Good. And now Abel's having a hard time finding the strike zone. And pitching coach just stepped out of the dugout. It might be taking a visit here. Well, and Clonch is walking out. In fact, the entire infield is now going to meet on the mound. And you're right. The pitching coach is going to make his way out to the mound to talk with Kevin Abel. Well, it's amazing when I talked about if you just get that big hit punch that starter in the face a little bit and make him face some adversity. He hasn't ha given up a ton of hits this year. Coming in on the day, he had given up only four hits in nine and, two, uh, nine and two-thirds innings pitched with 18 strikeouts. Yeah, right? with the one today, five total yeah, hits. Five total hits in, what, 14 innings now? 14 and two-thirds. 14 and two-thirds and, and 25 strikeouts, right? And so he's had a great start to the season, but... Peyton hits the big double, and then back-to-back -back good out, uh, good at bats by Pintar and Watkin and McIntyre, sorry, to get the walk. So now you have Deming up with the 1-0 count, with the chance to just blow this game open for us. We talked about this a lot during the Longhorn series, and just BYU needing to come up with those big hits yeah. in the in the big times with runners in scoring position, none bigger than this. Bases loaded, nobody out. Mm, good hit. Swing and a good, foul. Good hack. One ball and one strike to Austin Deming. And we talked about needing our, our dudes, Shep, our guys, our really, really talented players to step up in big spots. And this is one of them right here. I like Deming at the plate in this situation. Three-year veteran starter for us, big spot. The 1-1 pitch to Deming. Check swing. No, he didn't. And they'll say he went around, strike two. Yeah, from our vantage point, it looked pretty close. Well, Trent's giving him an ear full at first base because he saw it as well. See the ball up, and worst case scenario here, just pop, hit a ball, fly ball to right field, and score a run. One ball, two strike count. Abel delivers to Deming. Strike three looking. And a big strikeout for Kevin Abel, the first out here in the top of the sixth. Well, you swing at the curveball in the dirt, and then you take the strike three for a curveball right down the middle for strike three. You've got to put a swing on that. That's an actual elevated breaking ball there that you can hit a fly ball on. Base is still loaded, but now one out. You've got to put a ball in the outfield here, Cowden. Find now, a way. What you can't do is hit a ground ball no. and get the double play and let Abel off the hook. Find a way right here, Cowden. First pitch to Cowden. High, ball one. Almost the exact same first pitch that we yeah. saw to Deming. Situational hitting. Team at bats right here, Shep. This is what it's all about. If you want to win a ball game, you've got to be able to. Oregon State's had these chances and not able to get a hit. And now we have our first chance in a big spot here. Top so of the six. Bases loaded, one out. The 0-1. Or excuse me, the 1-0 misses now 2-0 and o to Josh Cowden. And that's a huge take right there. That's a borderline curveball for ball two. If he gets that pitch, it changes the whole bat. And now 2-0, you can be dead red here looking for a fastball to absolutely do some damage. One out. BYU looking to get on the board first. The 2-0 misses low, ball three. Oh, does coach let him go? Does coach let him go here? Let's see. What's your call? If you're sending in the signal, what are you saying? Oh, it's, I mean, you're, you're, it's 3 0 take right I'm take, here. I'm taking yeah, 3 0 take. Away. I'm going to make Abel make a pitch yep. in the strike zone. The 3 0 to Cowden. Ball four. Oh, oh my a goodness. late call. Josh had already started so to bad. move towards first, and the home plate umpire with a late strike call. That is so bad. That ball's way outside. Three balls and one strike to Cowden. Still dead red fastball. Be ready. 
The 3-1. Swing and a miss. And now a full count to count. Uh, man, that umpire just took a runaway, Shep. Oh, that's frustrating. Home plate umpire Joe Burleson. You can't give this good pitcher that kind of a break. He hasn't called that pitch all night. That could change. Depending on what happens here, that could change the complexion of this inning altogether. Come on, Cowden. Come on. Full count to Cowden. Bases loaded. One out. Scoreless ball game in the top of the sixth. The payoff pitch to Cowden. Stays alive. Fouls it back. Three and two. The count remains. You just wonder if he's going to have the confidence to ever go to a changeup right here. Cowden just was on time with that fastball and just fouled it back. I just think if you're able, you're going to stick with your pitch. I agree. Whatever your best pitch is, you're just going to stick with it in this situation. Come on, Cowden. Find a way. Find a way. Three balls. Two strikes. We'll do it again. Abel delivers to Cowden. In for strike three looking. And he went with the curveball. Back door. That is back-to-back strikeouts for Kevin Abel. Both looking by the BYU batters. The bases were loaded and nobody out. Now two outs. And the base is still loaded. Bringing in the designated hitter, Jacob Wilk. Oh, that's frustrating. You have a chance to get a big run, but that's why he's this that this good of a pitcher, right? Able to work out of these type of situations. First pitch to Wilk. Misses low, ball one. Be on time for a fastball right here, Jake. Hammer something right center. How about we go with uh, home run number two here? I'll take a right center double. That's what I want, right over second base. <laughs> Come on, Jake. The 1-0 to Wilk. Swing and a miss. That pitch fooled Wilk. One ball and one strike. Yeah, he's just going breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball to Wilk. I mean, that ball bounced in front of the plate. One ball, one strike. Base is still loaded, but now two outs. The 1-1, another swing and a miss, strike two. And Abel, a strike away from getting out of the bases loaded, no out situation. Curveball, curveball, curveball. That one was elevated, he just swung through it. He's going to go right back to the curveball down if I'm him. The 1-2 to Wilk, high, ball two. And Clunch saved a run, probably. Clunch has saved so many base runners. That pitch high and full extension by Clunch to get a glove on that. Otherwise, that's going all the way to the screen. He's just showing fastball there so he can go back to this curveball. You have to see it up and battle, battle. 2-2 pitch to Wilk. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And after a base is loaded, nobody out, three strikeouts from Kevin Abel, and the Cougars do not score. We are scoreless, heading to the bottom of the sixth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and your host, Jason Shepard. As we begin the bottom of the sixth, then we have our first pitching change for the BYU Cougars. This pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. But Kate Johnson, the sophomore righty from Dallas, Georgia, will take the mound for the BYU Cougars. The evening is done for Cougar starter Easton Walker. Five innings, five hits, no runs, three walks, four strikeouts, another fantastic performance, especially the the fourth and fifth inning that Easton pitched, getting out of some jams and no run scoring. Another great outing for Easton. Yeah, Easton just does what he does, Shep, and that is compete and give your team a chance. And 5-0 is exactly what you need. And now McKay's turn to come in, and who got the save against these guys last year, who threw a really good uh, inning in his outing against Texas last week. Facing Jake Dukart, and the first pitch misses, ball one. Oh, that last inning hurts, Shep. Bases loaded, no outs, and three straight punch outs, two of them looking. The 1-0 pitch misses high, ball two. McCade, his third appearance on the season. 
Comes in with an ERA of 6.75. Pitched two and two-thirds, five hits, two runs, both earned, four strikeouts. Johnson delivers the 2-0. And that misses, not by much. 3-0 now to Ducart. And if you're Oregon State, you're thinking, okay, well, look what our starting pitcher just did. Now it's our time to come out at the plate and try and build on that momentum. And 3-0 yeah, I mean, in for strike one. Everything's about momentum in this game. And bases loaded, no outs, punches out three really good hitters in a row. And then, you know, McKay goes 3-0 to the hitter. It just completely changed the momentum. The 3-1 pitch. Foul back, strike two, and a nice battle here by McKay Johnson to come back for falling behind three and O. Oh. Three balls, two strikes is the count. McKay Johnson on the mound, facing Jake Dukart. Johnson delivers the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. First out of the inning and the first strikeout for McKay Johnson. There you go, 3-0, and comes all the way back for the strikeout. Nicely done. Kyler McMahon will bat with the bases empty and one out. McMahon, 0 for 2, flied out and grounded out to first base. First pitch from McCade, misses, ball one. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you from Goss Stadium at Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon. Johnson delivers the 1 0. Ground ball to first. Johnson, or excuse me, Achikar. Takes it, steps on first. Johnson was there covering just in case. Nicely done. So two up, two down. And Wade Meckler, the designated hitter, 0 for 2, lined out twice. Will bat with the bases empty. Meckler from Yorba Linda, California, 5'10", 178-pound sophomore. Wearing number 28, and looks at strike one for McCade Johnson. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, BYU going with the all uh, gray with the Navy Cougars across the chest and the Navy numbers. Oregon State in the home whites with the black numbers with orange trim. Swing and a miss. Meckler can't catch up to the fastball from McCade Johnson. Yeah, 95 right there. Just could not catch up. So, McCade ahead of Meckler. No balls and two strikes. And a strike away from getting out of the inning. We are in the bottom of the sixth. The 0-2. Foul back. And the count stays 0-2 to Wade Meckler. Look in the uh, outfield. Just uh, in foul territory down left field, you have the Jacoby Ellsbury locker room. One of the famous Oregon State baseball alums. And your boy, Michael Conforto. The 0-2 pitch. Yes, he Inside is. and low. One ball, two strikes. It's crazy about Conforto. Is he was a really, really good college player. I didn't expect him to be this good of a pro. By but the way, who won the spring training uh, matchup yesterday between your Mets and my Cardinals? Uh, I don't know. Mm, I think it was a split squad. Nobody really played. And yeah, it wasn't. I wouldn't be bringing it up if we <laughs> lost. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, McCade. Get an out right here. One ball, two strikes, two outs, base is empty here in the bottom of the six. Scoreless ball game. Johnson delivers. Swing and a miss. That's two strikeouts in the inning for McKay Johnson coming in relief of tonight's starter, Easton Walker. And the Beavers go one, two, three in the bottom of the sixth. We are scoreless heading to the top of the seventh on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.